Hi there. Welcome to MCSI. My name is Erica. In this video, we will discuss some concepts about access control lists on Windows. Let's start with understanding what access control lists are. Computers running Windows were designed to be multi-user systems. For every file and program on that computer, the administrator can configure the level of access a user would have to it. For example, one user can only read a file, whereas another user can read a file and write to it. An access control list, or ACL, formally defines the read, write, and execute permissions that a user or a group has on a file or a program. When a file is created, a default access control list is assigned to it. It can be modified by the system administrator. Since the ACL contains the security information for a file or program, it is also referred to as security descriptor. Now, I will demonstrate how you can view access control lists in the user LAN. Let's consider the program notepad.exe. Right-click on the file and select Properties. Navigate to the Security tab. Here, we can view the list of user and groups who can use this program. Click on a user or group and view the permissions assigned to them here. This constitutes the Access Control List, or ACL, for the Notepad program. Using the command prompt, the command ICSCLS can be used to view the ACL associated with a file or program. Next, we will view the ACL of the Notepad binary in kernel LAN. Notepad is currently running on my computer. The binary is in execution, so we will view the ACL of the Notepad process. Before we begin observing access control lists in the kernel LAN, let us understand some concepts. When a program is in execution, in the kernel LAN, an object header is added to it. This object header contains a field called as SD or security descriptor that contains the access control list associated with that program. In the kernel land, we will first find the address of the program, then find the address of the object header, and find the address of the security descriptor to view its contents. Let's begin. I am already running Windows Debugger in kernel debugging mode. Notepad is currently running on this computer. Let's find the address the Notepad process is present at. Here it is. We will pass this value to the object command to find the address of the object header. We will copy this value. The next step is to find the address of the security descriptor within this header. For this, we will use this command. Here, we can find the address within the header where the security descriptor for Notepad is present. I will copy it and pass it as input to the SD command. To view the information, and an operation with minus 10 must be performed. Why? A detailed explanation for this is beyond the scope of this video. For now, we can understand that as we are working in kernel land, we are dealing with data and bits and bytes. This an operation is performed to interpret the information present in the security descriptor. Here, we can view the access control list associated with the notepad binary. Each item is referred to as an access control entry. Here, you can find information about whether the access is allowed or denied. Following this, you can find some flags, size of the access control entry and the security identifier or SID of the user for whom this entry is relevant. To map the SIDTOs a user, run this command in the terminal. I will tell you why knowing about Windows access control lists is important for malware reverse engineering. Cyber adversaries sometimes set or modify the access control information associated with files and binaries to enable malicious behavior. When a reverse engineer is aware of the internals of ACL, 
It helps greatly when analyzing malware. I highly encourage researching about the internals of ACL to know more about security descriptors, security identifiers, access control entries, access control flags and mass, etc. I hope you have a good idea now about how access control lists exist on a Windows computer. If you like this video, please hit like and share this video on social media. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive more videos like this one. Join our online community of students learning useful cybersecurity skills if you haven't already. To register for a free account right away, go to our website. Happy learning and see you soon.